Tacoma. Welcome back to TV Teaching for Second Grade. I'm Mrs. Oslin, and today is Tuesday, October 6th. Before we get started with our reading and writing today, we're going to do our zones check-in like we do every day to make sure that we're practicing identifying our emotions and practicing using strategies to get into the green zone ready to learn if we need to. So I'm going to have you check in with your brain and your body and use this zones chart to help you identify how you're feeling. If you're feeling sick or sad or tired, you might be in the blue zone. You're in the green zone if you feel focused, you feel awake, but calm and ready to learn. If you're feeling really silly or frustrated or you have a lot of energy, you might be in the yellow zone. And then the red zone is when we feel like we are out of control. We're really angry or mad about something. So go ahead, check in with your brain and your body right now. Gus, I'm feeling tired because I didn't sleep well last night. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. Gus suggests that I take some really deep breaths and practice having really good learning posture, sitting up straight so that I'm getting a lot of oxygen, which is the air we breathe, to my brain to help wake it up and focus. So let's do some deep breathing together. You'll remember our hand breathing. We use this to help us if we um, are need to calm ourselves down, but this can also work if we need to wake ourselves up. So you'll remember hand breathing is you get your hand up and you use your finger from your other hand to trace your hand. And as you do that, you, when you move up a finger, that's when you inhale, which means breathe in through your nose really deeply. And then as you move down the, uh, the other side of the finger, that's when you exhale or breathe out your mouth. So let's practice this together. Do it with me. feel much more awake and ready to learn. So thanks for that suggestion, Gus. The materials that you're going to need for our lesson today are, you're learning, buddy. I have Gus, but you might have a rock. You might have another stuffed animal. You might have a person in the room with you that you can talk to about your thinking. You're also going to need your second grade ELA packet. It actually says that on the front that hopefully you are able to pick up from your school. If you haven't picked that up yet, please contact your teacher because we're going to continue using the materials in that packet for the coming weeks. You also will need a pencil, sticky notes, and the KWL chart that we started yesterday. That is actually in your packet. So, review. Learning Buddy, KWL chart that's in your packet, a pencil, sticky notes. You go grab those four items and then meet me back over at the screen. You got your materials? Are you having strong learning posture sitting up? Okay, you'll remember that yesterday we started reading this nonfiction informational text called Hungry, Hungry Sharks. It's written by Joanna Cole and illustrated by Patricia Wynn. And we did some really deep thinking about what we think we already know about sharks. This is a good strategy that strong readers use to make connections with a text before they start reading it. We thought about what we think we know. And I taught you that instead of saying, I know, 
we use the term I think I know because that opens our brains up for the possibility of changing our thinking if we learn something that changes what we thought we knew about sharks. So we thought we knew that sharks have a lot of teeth. We thought we knew that sharks eat people. We thought we knew that sharks are big. We thought we knew that sharks live in the ocean. Then we did some thinking about what do we want to learn about sharks? What is a wondering that you have? And we put that in the W column. We thought, um, we wondered where sharks sleep. We wondered how many kinds of sharks there are. And we wondered if any animals hunt sharks. As we read Hungry Hungry Sharks today, we are going to work in the L column, which is where we are putting, writing what we learned about sharks. So here we go. Hungry, hungry sharks. Millions and millions of years ago, the earth did not look the way it does now. Strange looking plants grew in swamps, reptiles with wings flew in the air. Everywhere on land were dinosaurs, dinosaurs, dinosaurs. Out at sea, there were strange creatures too. Some looked like dragons, some looked like fish. This big fish could swim very fast. It had sharp teeth and a big fin on its back. What kind of a fish was this? A shark! There are no more dinosaurs left on Earth, but there are still plenty of sharks. Today, there are more than 300 kinds of sharks. Hey, that was a wondering that we had. Let's go back to our KWL chart. We wondered how many kinds of sharks there are. Well, now we know that there are over 300 kinds of sharks. So I crossed it off so I could keep track and keep um, organize my thinking. So I know that I had that question answered. And then we wrote it in the L column because that's what we learned. There are over 300 hundred kinds of sharks. That's a lot of sharks. Not all sharks are big. Many, many kinds are less than three feet long. The dwarf shark is no bigger than your hand. The small carpet shark lies on the ocean floor like a rug. The leopard shark has spots. It grows to be about four feet long. Well, the first sentence on that Page 12 says, not all sharks are big. And that made me think of what I thought I knew. Now, we wrote, I think I know sharks are big. And this is where really strong readers are open to changing what they think they know about something. Because I was not correct. Not all sharks are big. So we crossed that off of what I think I know. And we added the sentence to the L column, the learned column. Not all sharks are big. Some are as small as your hand. And I want to point out that it is important that we are actually writing these sentences on our L chart because your brain will remember things better when you write them down. Let's keep reading and see what else we learn. The biggest shark is the whale shark. It is longer than a bus. The whale shark has 3,000 teeth, but it will never bite you. Oof. It eats only tiny shrimp and fish. The whale shark is very gentle. A diver can even hitch a ride on its back. Could you imagine being a scuba diver and being underwater hitching a ride on the back of a whale that's as, excuse me, the back of a whale shark that's as big as a bus. That would be cool. These are blue sharks. They are far out at sea hunting for food. Suddenly, they pick up the smell of blood. The sharks speed up. They shoot through the water like torpedoes. In a few minutes, they find a dead whale. The blue sharks tear off big chunks of whale meat. Now the water is full of biting sharks. If one shark gets hurt, the others turn on it. 
they will eat that shark too. In a short time, the whale is all gone. The sharks swim away. Nothing is left. Nothing but bones. Blue sharks are called the wolves of the sea. This is because they stay together in packs. Blue sharks often swim after a ship for days. A long time ago, sailors thought this meant that someone was going to die. Why do blue sharks really follow ships? The sharks come because of noises from the ships, ship. Then they stay to eat garbage that is thrown into the water. The most dangerous shark in the sea is the great white shark. It is named after its white belly. The teeth of the great white shark are big and sharp, very, very sharp. It can eat a whole seal in one bite. The great white shark is the size of a speedboat. <clears throat> this great white shark has just had babies. Many fish lay eggs, but most sharks do not. Their babies are born alive. A baby shark is called a pup. The pup of the great white shark is almost the size of a man. As soon as they are born, the pups go their own way. It is not safe to stay near a hungry mother. The baby sharks swim off to catch their own food. One eats a fish, another eats a crab. The pups had better watch out for puffer fish. The puffer fish can blow up like a balloon. If a shark eats it, its spines get stuck in the shark's throat. The shark will die. Not many animals can kill great white sharks. That makes me think about the wondering that I had if there were any other animals that hunt sharks. So as I read this page, I'm gonna to wanna to really pay attention. The stingray flaps through the sea like a giant bat. Its tail has a poison stinger. The poison can kill most sharks, but a great white shark can eat a stingray, stinger and all. The swordfish is a very strong fish. It can cut and stab with its long nose, but even a swordfish almost always loses a fight with a great white shark. Hmm. So I wondered if any animals hunt sharks. And now I'm knowing that many animal, not, excuse me, not many animals can kill a great white shark. So I crossed off under the wonder or want to know, I wonder if any animals hunt sharks because I have some new information that not many animals can kill a great white shark. Another big shark is the hammerhead shark. It is easy to see how it got its name. Look at that picture of that shark, the hammerhead. The author tells us it's easy to see how it got its name. Can you tell how it got its name? That's what I was thinking too. The head is shaped like a hammer that you would, like a tool hammer. Like other big sharks, the hammerhead never sleeps and never stops swimming. I was wondering where sharks sleep. And now Joanna is teaching me that the hammerhead sharks never sleeps like other big sharks. So I can cross that wondering off my list and add some new learning to my learned column. Big sharks never sleep and never stop swimming. Because Joanna taught us, if they stop swimming, they sink. This hammerhead swims to a group of dolphins. It tries to catch one of the young dolphins, but sharks do not always get their way. The dolphins fight back. One dolphin dives under the water. It comes up and hits the hammerhead. The shark flies up in the air. It falls back into the wa on the water. Smack! The dolphins keep hitting the shark. After a while, the shark stops moving. It sinks down into the water. It is dead. Dolphins are smart animals. 
They can work together to kill an enemy, but sharks are not as smart. They have tiny brains. Well, this kind of, that new information about dolphins also addresses my wondering about if any animals hunt sharks. So I added the sentence, dolphins can team up and kill a hammerhead shark. Even though they're not really hunting the hammerhead shark, they are really just defending themselves. But that was new learning for me, so I added it to my column. A shark's brain is small, but its teeth are big. It has many rows of teeth. When a tooth breaks off, a new tooth moves up to take its place. A shark uses up thousands of teeth every year. What do sharks eat with all these teeth? Fish and more fish. Other sharks, seals, turtles, crabs, almost anything that swims in the sea. Now, I thought I knew that sharks have a lot of teeth. And this page confirms that thinking. It has many rows of teeth. So I can go back to my what I think I know column. And I said, I think I know sharks have a lot of teeth. Well, now I definitely know that. So I can just cross off the I think part because now I do know that sharks have a lot of teeth. Sometimes sharks eat things that are not food. No one knows why. All these things have been found inside big sharks. A wallet, a fur coat, a drum, a bottle of wine, a chest of jewels, a barrel of nails, and a suit of armor. Do sharks eat people? Yes, they do. If a person is near a shark, the shark may attack. I thought I knew that. But the number of people killed by sharks is very small. Many more people, excuse me, more people die from bee stings than from shark bites. So let's go back to our KWL chart. And I thought I knew that sharks eat people. Well, now I know that for sure. So I, again, can just cross off the I think because I do for sure know that sharks eat people. Scientists want to study sharks, but it is hard to study them at sea. And it is hard to keep big sharks alive in a tank. Once scientists caught a great white shark, they put it in a tank with other fish, but the shark did not eat. And it kept bumping into the sides of the tank. After a few days, the shark began to die. So the scientists took the shark back to sea. They set it free. There are many things we do not know about sharks, but we do know that sharks are in danger. This is because people hunt them for food. And often sharks die just by getting tangled in fishing nets. So the number of sharks is getting smaller. Many people are trying to save them. Sharks are amazing animals. Oceans would not be the same without sharks. Now, it's important, readers, that as we're reading nonfiction or informational texts, that we're really paying attention to learning about how we as people impact the world around us. So we're learning in this text that sharks are in danger, which means there are not a lot of sharks left. And it's our job as people to protect all of the creatures on our earth that are living with us. Now, readers, it's your turn when you go off to independent reading. I want you to find an informational or a nonfiction text that you can learn something from. Yesterday, I had you do the K, what I think I know, and the W, what I want to know or a wondering that I have about your informational text. Today, I want you to go back and read your text and check in with what you think you know and check in with your wonderings and see if you can answer some of your questions or see if some of your thinking gets changed by filling in the L column on your KWL chart. You could also use your sticky notes to write cool or interesting or fun facts about your topic and just stick them right in your book so that you can share them with someone, your learning buddy or with someone who's at home. Second graders, thank you for doing some really important thinking with me today, you're going to take your five minute break, go to the bathroom, get your drink of water, get some wiggles out. And then when we come back, Mrs. Wally will be here with you for math. Thank you so much. And I'll see you tomorrow, second graders.
Bye.
Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405. Welcome back, second graders. I hope you had a great time learning about sharks with Ms. Oslin. I was listening in and I learned some information I didn't even know, fantastic. Before we get started with math today, I want you to make sure that you have the materials you're going to need. So for our lesson, you need to get your learning buddy, a whiteboard and a whiteboard marker, or a piece of paper and a pencil, and a baggie with counters in it. Today our lesson is going to look a little bit different than all of our other lessons. This is a review lesson. So we're going to go through and I'm going to show you what it looks like to do these problems on paper and you're going to follow along with me with your whiteboard. Now some of these problems can be found in your workbook but I want you to do the work on your whiteboard with me and if you want to do them again you can go back and do them in your workbook to practice later. Okay so learning buddy, whiteboard marker, and whiteboard, pencil and paper, and some counters to use in case we need to use counters. Go ahead and get those things and then meet me at the smart board so we can finish yesterday's lesson like I promised. Okay, let's go. Go grab them and I'll meet you at the board. All right. Yesterday we were talking about using a number bond to help us figure out equations, figure out parts of equations we didn't know. And so today we need to look at each of these equations and decide, does the equation match the word family? So I'm gonna get my pen ready and I'm gonna get a bright color that we can see. Actually, I'm gonna do blue today and I'm on pen, yep. So let's look at this number bond first before we do anything. What do we know about this set of facts? What do we know? Look at the number bond. What do we know about the number 12? That's our total or our whole or our sum, right? That's the whole amount, okay? Then what else do we know? One of the parts is seven and the other part is five. Now I wanna talk to you a little bit about equations that's gonna help you when trying to figure out which ones of these work. Here's how a number bond works with equations. We have a part plus a part equals the whole. The part, this is a part, this is a part, and this is the whole, okay? When we're subtracting, we have, we start with the whole, we subtract one of the parts, and it equals the other part. Isn't that cool? So if I was subtracting, I said 12 minus seven, my answer is gonna be the other part. If I said seven plus five, the sum is going to be the whole. So let's take a look and let's see if any of these match our number bond. Are you ready? Let's look at this first one. So we have addition. That means it should be the part plus the part. So let's look at those numbers. Seven, is that one of our parts? Yes. Five, is that one of our parts? Bingo. 12, is that our whole? Yes. Does A match this fact family? Yes, it does. Okay. Now let's look at B. Right off the bat. What number is that? This one, 19. Is 19 anywhere here in this fact family in the number bonds? Do you see a 19? No. So can that be an answer? Nope, because there is no 19. 12 plus seven is 19, but it doesn't match our fact family. So it's not an answer. Okay, now let's look at C. Let's look at what operation we're doing. We're subtracting. So when we subtract, our starting number is the whole. What's our starting number in this fact family? 12, look, 12. And I take away one of the parts. I take away one of the parts, which is five. And my difference is the other part, which was seven. Is C correct? C is correct. 
Okay, let's look at D. What operation are we doing? Are we adding or subtracting? Let's circle it, what are we doing? We're adding. When we add using a number bond, the part and the part makes the whole. Are these two numbers the parts in our fact family? They are. Is this the whole in our fact family? It is. D is the correct, another one that works. Okay, let's look at the last one. What operation are we using in this last equation? Subtraction. Let's look at our little key over here. When we subtract using a number bond, we start with the whole, we subtract one of the parts, and we get another part, okay? Or we start with the whole, we subtract one of the parts, and we get the other part. So let's see. 12, did we start with the whole? We're subtracting a part. Is seven one of our parts in our number bond? Yep. There it is, right here. And our difference, that's the answer to a subtraction problem. Our difference, is it the other part? Yes, it is. So does E work as well? It sure does. The bottom, it said, Lily chose B as the correct answer. How did she get that answer? Private think time. Why did Lily choose B? What do you think made her choose B? Hmm. Turn and talk to your learning buddy. Why do you think Lily chose B? We did the math and we said B was incorrect. So what made Lily choose B? Interesting. Because Lily knew that 12 plus 7 was 19. Right? Why do we know that this is not the correct answer? Right, 19 is not part of our fact family here for 12, 7, and 5, is it? So we know that that's not the correct answer. Great. I'm going to meet you over at my whiteboard, and we're going to do the rest of these problems on our whiteboard today. So Mr. Kevin's going to get the whiteboard up. I'm going to move over, and we're going to do some whiteboard problems today. So this is review work from first grade and kindergarten, and I want to see if you remember it. If you have the number 14, what are the two parts that make up the number 14 with a 10 and extra ones? You have 14. How do you make 14? 10 and four. So if my equation is 14 minus blank equals 10, just like we talked about, we have the whole and we take away a part and our difference is the other part, which is 10. What number is going to go here? Four. Excellent. Let's see if you can do the next one on your own. I'm going to write it out. I want you to write out on your board 17 minus blank equals 10. And then do that number bond. 17, make your two lines, 10, and how many extra ones? 7. So what number is going to go here? What part are we missing? 17 minus blank equals 10. 7, right? Yeah. If you have 17 and you take seven ones away, how many do you have left? 10. Okay, let's do the next one. 15 minus blank equals 10. Let's do that number bond again. 15 is made up of 10 and five extra ones. I know that 10 is my difference. That's the answer I got. So what part is missing? Five. 15 minus five equals 10. Okay, last one. You do it. 13 minus blank equals 10. Okay, you do the number bond. Even if you think you know what goes here, I want you to do the number bond to check your thinking. That's really important. Mathematicians solve problems in more than one way. Sometimes we solve it in our head, but it is really important that we also do a modeled picture to check our thinking, even if we think we know. 13, what are my two parts? The 10 and the extra ones, okay.
Cover up the part we've used as the answer. What's the other part? Three, because 10 and three makes 13. Here's a challenge problem for you. What addition equation could you write that's part of this fact family? Go ahead, write it. 10 plus three equals 13. Or what's the other one? Three plus 10 equals 13. Fantastic job, second graders. All right, let's move to the next slide. Are you ready? Okay, now, many times students see this, they don't see the words to show their work. They just see multiple choice and so they guess, or they do all the work in their head. That is not what strong mathematicians do. Strong mathematicians work out the problem and then find the answer that matches. So let's do our three read. Javier has 12 eggs. He cooks three eggs for breakfast. How many eggs does Javier have left? So what's this about? Tell me, what's it about? Yeah, Javier is cooking breakfast. He has some eggs and cooks part of them, right? We're trying to figure out what part is left. So what is the important information? I'm gonna start with a number bond here. What do we know? What's the important information? 12 eggs, that he has 12 eggs. He cooks three of them, okay, and what's left? Yeah, so we're trying to figure out what he, how many eggs he has left. So where are we gonna put these numbers in our number bond? What's our hole in the problem? What does Javier start with? 12 eggs. And how many does he cook? Three. And so we're trying to figure out how many eggs Javier has left. I could do this in a picture. I could draw ten, eleven, twelve. Right? And I can say that Javier cooks three. So I'm gonna color in three of them. You could use your counters. You could put out 12 counters and separate the, th the part that we know. The part we know is three. We're trying to figure out the part we don't know. What is the equation that matches that? 12, we have a hole and a part. We're trying to find the other part. When we're trying to find a part, do we add or subtract? We subtract equals what? We don't know. 12 minus three cooks three. And we're trying to figure out how many Javier has left. How do we figure it out? Private think time. Hmm. Go ahead, tell me, how could you figure this out? Tell me about your thinking. Okay, I heard someone say, I can count the ones that are left. Okay. Is there any mental math you could do to figure this out? Oh, that was really great mathematical thinking. I just heard someone say, well, two and three are really close together. So if I know that 12 is made up of 10 and two, if I take away three, I'm gonna take away two, and I'm gonna, three is made up of two, one. I'm gonna take away one from the 10, and that's gonna give me nine. So what they did is they took the three and they broke it up into two and one, and they said 12 minus two is 10. Oh, you can't see that. Let's, I'm gonna move it up here. They took the three and they broke it up into the number they see here in the ones place, two and one. So 12 minus two is 10, minus one more is nine. That was, I wasn't even thinking that. That's excellent mathematical thinking. Let's check if that mental math was correct. If I have five and four, how many do I have? Nine. 12 minus three equals nine. So what is the correct answer up on our screen? C, 
We didn't have to guess. We did the math. We checked our thinking like strong mathematicians do, and we found the answer. Excellent work, second graders. Oh, another one of these fact family ones. Okay, let's write out that number bond. You do it with me. 13 is the whole. Our two parts are seven and six. Let's write all the equations we can think of that we can write for 13 and seven and six. Let's start with the addition ones. Seven plus six, six plus seven. Both of these equal 13. Does it matter which side I write the equals 13 on? It doesn't. We still start here when we say it. Or we'd say 13 equals 7 plus 6. We were from left to right. Or 7 plus 6 equals 13. Doesn't matter. All right, now let's do the subtraction equations. 13 minus 7 equals what? 13 minus 7 equals... 6 and 13 minus yes 6 equals what second graders tell me what does it equal 7 so now let's look at a 7 plus 6 equals 13 is that in our fact family take a look at the work we did is that yep it is so a that's one of our answers look at b 13 plus 7 equals 20. Is that part of our fact family? Hmm. Is 20 in our fact family 13, 7, and 6? 13 plus 7 is 20. But is it in our fact family? We did all the equations. Do you see it there? Nope. So B is not one of the answers. Let's look at C. 13 minus 7 equals 6. Is that in our fact family equations we did? Yep. Oop, not B. C is another one of our answers. Let's look at D. 6 plus 7 equals 13. Do you see that up here in our equations? Yep. Nice job. Let's look at the last one. 13 minus 6 equals 7. Do you see that in our equations? Yes, you do, right here, E. Excellent work, second graders. Okay. Hmm. Could you make a 10 to solve the following problems? Yes or no for each problem. Think about what I just did back earlier where I took the number and I split it up. So let's look at 14 minus seven. We'll do this one together. I used the seven. So I said seven and I looked here at what I'm subtracting from and I know that there's four in the ones place. So seven is made up of four, five, six, seven, four and three. So what I do is I take 14 I subtract 10. No, I lied. I'm sorry. 14 minus 4 equals 10, right? So I've done this one, and now I need to subtract 3 more. What's 10 minus 3? Equals 7. So 14 minus 7 equals 7. Did we use our 10 to help us solve? This next problem, 10 minus 2, it's already at 10. So do we need to break apart the 2? No, you, we don't. I agree with you. 9 minus 3. Do we need to break apart the 3 to get to a 10? No, that's not going to work. Why don't we do 12 minus 4 equals blank? Can we use a 10 to help us solve this one? Let's see. 4. How many ones do we have in our whole? Two. I'm trying to make four and I have two. What's my other part? Two, three, four. 
Okay. So I'm starting with 12 and I'm going to do this part. 12 minus 2 equals, there it is, 10. I've used this part of 4. Now I need to use this part of 4. What is 10 minus 2 second graders? 8. So 12 minus 4 equals 8. How could we check that problem? Could we use a related addition fact to check that problem? Can we start with our part, add it to our part, and see if we get a whole? 8 plus 4 equals blank. We can do the same thing here. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Does it match 12 and 12? It does. Do we use our 10 to help us? We did. Excellent job. Okay, it says you solve 12 minus 5 using a related fact. And friends, again, we have run out of time. I just looked at my timer. So I'm, we will start with this one tomorrow as our warm up. And I would like you to practice. It's actually the part of your assignment today. So I want you to do page 50 in your workbook. And you're going to answer those three questions and then we will go over those questions to start tomorrow second graders i'm going to come up to the front camera so we can do our affirmation you are working hard on math time flies when you work really hard excellent job so today your affirmation is i work hard because you do doing all of this at home learning you have to work really hard so i'm going to say it and then you're going to say it I work hard. Your turn. Excellent work, second graders. We will see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey kids, we want to see your work. Just send your pictures and your stories to TV Classroom, 601 South 8th Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98405.